And we want you to know we are live here on the Word Network from 8 to 10 p.m. You're listening to the Kingdom Encounter or watching the Kingdom Encounter. We are here at the Simon Temple Amy Zion Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now, we want you to also share with us in this experience. We believe in being connected in the body of Christ. We need you to touch and agree with us, not just today, but in the future as well. So want to let you know that you can go to Facebook. We have the Kingdom Encounter. Go to the Kingdom Encounter on Facebook. Facebook and you can be able to check us out there. Also, you can check us out on Twitter at Kingdom or The Kingdom ENC or Kingdom Encounter. Kingdom ENC. Is that right? Kingdom ENC. Got to check because I made sure. Listen, it's a brand new page. It's up. It's rolling, but we want to make sure. Those in the studio audience are probably just checking us out right now. They're going to Kingdom ENC, sending a tweet about it because, listen, we want people to know that the Kingdom is real. Amen. And God is still in control. Amen. Joined by Pastor Edwin Sutton. And um, we were talking, when we were talking about the four of us, you know, just here, talking about the events of the last two weeks. And we, listen, let's be honest. We want to talk about some other stuff, but knowing what's happened in our community, any pastor worth their salt mm. should be talking about the injustice that continues to plague us as a people uh, continuing to be oppressed. And the church should have a response. Amen. On account of the most uh, recent lynchings of our black men, it is very inappropriate and irresponsible for us, for us just to go to the local church assembly and for us to even appear on national Christian television and just high five your neighbor without addressing the current facts and issues that will indeed help our neighbors. We are grieving as we ought, we are offended as we should be. We're giving way to commentary as we should. But here is the problem. Commentary without matrimony is vacuity. Mm. It is empty in and it of itself, it's fruitless. Uh, for instance, the church, or black Christians rather, we are outraged, but we are not engaged. Mm. We, have a, we have a right to be outraged, but we have a responsibility to be engaged. Amen. You cannot shift a corrupt system that you are not a part of. That's right. You cannot tell the Egyptian system to let God's people go if in fact you have no relationship with Egypt. Right. Biblically speaking, approximately 4,000 years after the fall of man, when the earth was contaminated with sin, God didn't do anything to shift the systems of the earth. Mm. He didn't do anything because he couldn't do anything. He didn't have a license to operate on the earth. Well, some say, well, the flood came, he shifted the system. Well, ultimately, the flood didn't shift the system because Noah still gave birth to polluted offsprings. Mm. So the cycle continued. Um, but God couldn't shift the system because he didn't have a license to because he gave mankind the license back in Genesis when he gave us dominion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and so here is the problem. Uh, he has the power, but man has the authority. Mm. Lord, look at the anti antithesis, as we can call it, antithesis rather. Um, God has the power to shift the system, but he doesn't have the authority to shift the system. On the other end, man has the authority to shift the system, but he does not have the power to shift the system. Right. So God takes counsel within himself saying, the only way that the systems of the earth can be shifted, that I must place myself and put it in a man. Right. See, see, he didn't have residence in the earth. Your residence is the province of your license. Mm. You cannot have dominion where it is that you don't have domain. And since he didn't have dominion, he had to place himself in a man. And the man had the authority to shift the system. We're not using our authority. We're not using our authority. 
We're, our problem is we have lacked the ability in some setting to be the apostolic church. We're raising up people in the church, but we're not sending them out. Mm. We're so focused on raising somebody else up to be the next head usher. Mm. To be the next minister of music, next pastor, next bishop. And all that has merit, right. but it's bigger than that. It is not until we send individuals to Capitol Hill. Mm. It is not until we send black Christians into law enforcement that we can really shift the system of the world. There's some things, there's some things honestly, that we're missing, and we're talking to Pastor Sutton about this because we know that the church always has had power. When you talk about the Civil Rights Movement, when you talk about the Million Man March, the Million Man March, whether it was the Voting Rights Act, it all flowed through the church. And the church was the primary place that was the ones that got the ball rolling to affect change. This generation right now is active because we talk about millennials. Millennials are active in, 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 in the earth realm, but we as the church, what about engaging our millennials and others to really take that next step? We want our millennials to be active, but we want them to be productive. And, and it goes back to the engagement. It's, my, my. It's, it's great to protest and to march around. But when you are in the system, you don't march around, you march too. Right. Queen Esther is in the system. She doesn't march around. She marches to the king. Right. And she says, if I perish, let me perish. I'm going to see the king. Right. All we can do is march around because we stay in church because we don't know the king. My mind. And we need to raise, we need to raise leaders up. We raise them up in the church, but we shouldn't raise them up for the church. We raise them up for the world. Right. And we need to... Listen, we need to have kingdom impact in the world. And so we're talking about raising up people. We're talking about, listen, raising people up to have impact in the kingdom for the kingdom. You have to not just protest. I've said this before. It's important to protest. And I yes. think it, the protest is important. But you also have to challenge policy. That's right. At the end of our protest, what do we need to do? We need to have people who are in the room challenging policy, helping to change the policy and rewrite the policy. That's right. if, that, if we don't have that, then all we've got is a voice, but we haven't had the action to follow the voice. That's right. That's right. That's right. We need a voice but we need hands, we need feet. What's a voice without a head? Mm. What's a head without a neck? And so we're, we're growing weary and we're growing tired, but we need individuals in every sector of society, in law enforcement, in the educational system, in government, so we can shift the culture. That is the great commission to go ye into all the world. The world, cosmos in the Greek, the harmonious arrangement, the order, as Bishop Blue would say, the system, mm -hmm. to go into all the system, every system, challenge it, and turn it towards God. We can make impact. We can make we, impact. We can make impact and we can make it happen. We want to continue to encourage our congregations to be strong, to be encouraged, to be lifted up. We want people to know that, listen, in spite of what's going on, God is still in control. But it requires us turning to God. And in this situation, when people ask me as a pastor, they say, listen, pastor, what do I do in times like these? I say faith without works is dead. You have to have faith, but then you also have to activate That's what right. your faith enables you to do. Right. And, and many times I found out that God has blessed us with some things. We've got gifts, we've got talents, we've got graces. And like I tell my people back at home, the one thing is, is that we fail to activate what's already inside of us. You have to activate what you have. Now, if I talk to the Jerry Curl generation and you know about the Jerry Curls, Everybody, listen, we, is, we know about jerry curls. You had step one all the way down through step number six. And you could do process one through five, but number six was the last one where you had to squish, squish, 
activate. And we have to learn as the body of Christ to activate what is in us, who is in us. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We have to activate God in our circumstances. And it seems as though that when we find circumstances and situations that there's more flesh and less God. That's right. That's right. The Bible says he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think, but we forget the next part. But it's according to the power that's working in us. We've got to work the power that's already in us. The power is working in us and the power is working through us. Give a word to the people today. Uh, you're going to preach in a little while, but I, I want you to give a word of encouragement to people today about this situation, knowing that we are in some tough times, but the people of God are still encouraged in spite of. I don't know about me preaching in a little while, but I can say we must pray, but be encouraged, for God is still on the throne. Amen.